Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here from cinemasound.com. Today we're going to be using Adobe Premiere Pro to help mix music into dialogue using Notch EQ. Have you ever had a problem trying to figure out how to get the music level up with the dialogue also uh, being able to be understood? That's what we use Notch EQ for. Let's roll. All right, how do we make our music blend in well with uh, well-mixed dialogue. That's kind of one of the age-old questions. How loud should music be versus dialogue? Obviously, the dialogue should be very, very intelligible. How do we get that to work? Well, there's a couple ways of doing it, and here in Adobe Premiere Pro, I've sort of perfected a good sound button way of doing it. Uh, we used to use Notch EQ, which we still use, but in this case, this is a lot more dynamic and a lot easier to use, more than just simple ducking. You can certainly use the Essential Sound Panel to do ducking, uh, and that's a super cool thing to do where you just say, here is the music, and I'm be playing you the music here in a second. Uh, you just say, that's music, and you say, this is the dialogue. And then we want to go over here and say, ducking, and generate the keyframes. And then it does a pretty good job of doing all that for us. But if we want to have a little more control, then we're going to have to do something else, and that's multiband compressor. So here's what this sounds like with just music at zero, um, you know, way too loud and mixed dialogue. But you're taking unnecessary risks that stunt and destroy all this insubordination. That gives this ship another few minutes of rest and several hours of a boost to morale. And Haas and I are the only... So obviously, you know, the music's fine. It's just mixed in a bad way. One of the first things that we have to do is be able to figure out where the dialogue is actually living in the frequency spectrum. One of the easiest ways to do that is simply instantiate a parametric EQ on the dialogue channel or dialogue bus. And it immediately gives you a, a frequency analysis of what the dialogue is. And here, just for that microsecond that we had his dialogue up, we see the sibilance up here, some whistlies here, but generally his sound is in this zone. That gives this ship another few minutes of rest and several hours of a boost in morale. And she's sort of up here, a little bit higher, but not much. That's the body of their voice, which music isn't going to touch very much. But up here in the sibilance and in this kind of uh, what I would classify as the roar or edge area, that is a place. This whole band from about 1K up to about 4 or 5, we want to be very careful with the music. Now, if we solo the music, if we do the same thing with the music, actually, let's just bring this up here. In fact, I'll just option drag over. Double click this. Now that's the band of the music. Pretty full bandwidth. I mean, it almost looks like pink noise, really, doesn't it? The only ones I could do it. Blue noise, really. So we can just kind of notch anywhere in here, and it's probably not going to affect the frequencies of the music so much that it's going to make us mad. But we can already hear that in that music is a lot of this upper, mid-range, uh, low, high-frequency stuff. And I'll just solo. You can hear You know, those strings are in there kind of just sawing away. And instead of pulling down the overall volume on the music, which we can certainly do. Stunt the destroyer was insubordination. That gives this ship another few minutes of rest and several hours of a boost in morale. What's really important here is to notice what frequencies are annoying us. And it's going to be those frequencies that are on top of their dialogue. These frequencies here, well, let's see. Multiband compressor is really just four compressors in one, basically locked to specific frequencies. And we're going to basically take only and use only two of these, the ones in the middle. And we're going to balance them at 1K to about two and a half, and then or three high twos, and then the other one up here. And we're going to see if we can notch this. This is what this band sounds like. And Haas and I are the only ones that could do it. And this band. <laughs> Look, I've got... But you're taking unnecessary risks. That's so, um, you know, th that's, those are frequencies we really don't need much of. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a 4 to 1 ratio. We're going to make this very slow, almost like mastering level compression. Maybe 200 milliseconds, not 240, 250. And then we're going to bring these thresholds down. Destroy this insubordination. That gives this ship another few minutes of rest and several hours of a boost in morale. And Haas and I are the only ones that could do it. <laughs> Look, I've got... But you're taking unnecessary risks. That stunt in the destroyer was insubordination. That gives this ship another few minutes of rest and several hours of a boost in morale. And Haas and I 
are the only ones that could do it. Oh, look, I've got... But you're taking unnecessary risks. That stunt in the Destroyer was insubordination. That, that gives... Now we've got a beautiful contour that's happening, and it's also balancing the music out quite a bit. Um, now, instead of having to pull this down 18 decibels, let's see what the balance could be like now. This ship, another few minutes of rest and several hours of a boost in morale. And Haas and I are the only ones that could do it. Oh, look, I've got... So really only the overall needs to come down a couple of decibels, maybe three, just to be safe. And these confounding mid-frequencies are the ones that really need to be uh, attenuated. And because it's a compressor, not just a straight EQ, just pulling things down and pushing it down, it's actually being dynamic in how it's dealing with it. We can make this shorter and get a little more draconian results, certainly fast working. But you're taking unnecessary risks. That stunt in the Destroyer was insubordination. That gives this ship another few minutes of rest and several hours of a boost in morale. And Haas and I are the only ones that could do it. So, you know, it, it is, especially with a track like this, if you had something that was super, super transient, those transients would easily come through, or you could haircut them by giving them a zero attack. But this is one of the easiest ways to create a nice overall, sort of not really a notch, it's more like a sledgehammer down on frequencies in music that are interfering with the dialogue so that you can keep the music up and the dialogue clear. It's a pretty simple process, but it's incredibly effective. And in Adobe Premiere Pro, it's very easy and intuitive to do. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If so, please subscribe to us here at the YouTube channel and enjoy our hundreds of videos that help you get that Hollywood level million dollar audience immersion into your productions. And then of course, Join us at cinemasound.com where we have the world's only fully comprehensive audio education for picture that takes you from knowing nothing about sound all the way to delivering in Dolby 5.1, as well as hundreds of articles that help you do the uh, processes of becoming uh, adept at making that million dollar audience immersion in far more detail than the videos here on YouTube. Hopefully we'll see you there. If not, we'll see you in post. Even if you're